It only seems right after my extensive testing of Super Nakeds this year. The last six weeks I've tried all the Super Nakeds bar the new H2SX SE, which I'm testing next week. But I've tried all the others and it only seems right that I test again what was my bike of 2020. The, my ultimate Super Naked, like, well, my ultimate bike of 2020 last year, the KTM 1290 Super Duke. I've tested the Street Fighter, I've tested the new Speed Triple RS on the road and on the track. I've tested the Dragster, the MV Dragster, the new Street Fighter. It only seems right we go back to the Super Duke and I let you know how this bike compares to all those other Super Nakeds and if this still is the daddy. Chopsy, roll the intro. Is she still the daddy? like getting aboard an old friend. It's like riding an old friend. Oh yes. So, a quick recap of the stats of this machine, because it's been a year or so since I've uh, reviewed one of these. About 180 horsepower, give or take. 140 newton meters of torque. A massive revision for last year this bike with the new frame the new suspension you know up, up, updated sort of pivot points for the swinging arm additional linkages in the rear a smaller fuel tank but bigger air box with new top feed injectors I mean KTM went through this entire bike and completely overhauled it last year and when I first rode this I was blown away with how much better it was than the Gen 2 version. It is head and shoulders above the Gen 2 version, this bike. Those who say, well, now the Gen 2's better. It's not, guys. Wake up and smell the coffee. <laughs> this thing is a far superior package to the Gen 1, Gen 2 bikes. The Gen 2 bikes are fantastic, but this just completed that package. The engine was always the showstopper with the Gen 2 bike. It was the it was all about that engine, but the chassis never quite lived up to the engine's potential. KTM sorted that. The chassis is as good as the engine now, and it makes such a complete package. But not only that, not only have they made the chassis great, made it handle and everything, but it's just the engine response. It's an absolute pussycat lower down the rev range now. There's none of that shuddering. There's none of that transition of weight back and forth. It was tiring to ride the old bike. This one is just mm, beautiful. But things have moved on. There's some new competition now. There's an all new Tuono for 2021, which is amazing. The Street Fighter's been overhauled. It's got more torque lower down the rev range and they've made it a little bit easier to ride. So where does the Super Duke sit now? And of course, let's not forget the brand new Speed RS, which is incredible. do those bikes compare to this one? Well unfortunately I can't do a comparison with Greg between this and the Tuono because he's in Greece at the moment on holiday and I haven't got the Tuono while I've got this. It's just the timing's worked out bad unfortunately because we both would have really liked to have pitched this up against the Tuono because these two really... <laughs> what? The Super Duke and the Tuono really are sort of classed as the two daddies of the Super Naked, really. The other ones are all good, but I think it's those two which uh, people think of when you think of the ultimate Super Naked. Oh, but the Tuono's not a Super Naked, Charles, because it's got fairing. Oh, behave. What really impresses me with the Super Duke, and it did last year, it still does now when I jumped on it, it's just how easy it is to ride. Bikes like the Street Fighter were just hard work to ride. I know in our, in our comparison I said I'd take the Street Fighter over the Tuono. Well when I rode the Street Fighter back to Ducati, 
I changed my mind. It's just such hard work and I only got 80 miles out of a tank on it and sort of on the motorway, not even really riding it that hard. 80 miles to a tank. It's just not practical. There's so much engine braking. It's just really tiring to ride. And it's almost a bit too loud. Even the sound of it was too loud. It was getting on my nerves by the time I arrived back at Ducati and I was all too happy to hand it over and ride away on this and as soon as I got on this it was just chalk and cheese so easy to ride the perfect amount of engine braking without throwing you forward every time and yes I did adjust the engine braking on the electronics on the street flight up I, mi I minimized it as much as you can on the electronics and it's still too much this is just a beautiful bike to ride the suspension I'd say is for the road it's absolutely perfect it's not as taut it's not as sharp it doesn't handle as well as the street rs i think the street rs is the most focused of the super nakeds now it's the quickest for a set of twisties the street the uh, speed triple rs it's the quickest through a set of twisties out of all the super nakeds which is quite amazing it is fast that bike the brakes are incredible, you know, it's just, I think it's the scalpel, to term a KTM phrase, of the Super Nakeds now, that Speed RS, but it's not perfect, you know, it is a little stiff, the suspension, when you want to just ride slow, I mean, I dialed out a lot of it, it was nowhere near as bad as what all the reviews said, but it is a little bit taut still, so when you're not looking to uh, go bananas, it's, it's, it is a little bit taut, this is a little bit softer, it's a little bit more forgiving, the front, you know, this doesn't handle as well. The front end doesn't give as much feedback as the speed. The speed front end was the best front end in the business, absolutely. But this is just a slightly nicer bike to ride, I think, on the road. Also, the electronics on the speed. Triumph completely cocked that up. Completely cocked up the electronics, meaning, you know, so you can't separate anti-wheelie and traction control. Completely cocked that up for a super naked that is no good at all that that put me right off that bike and also to actually turn off the traction control you've got to go all through the menus and then it comes back on again once you reset the ignition no that is uh, that's something from a decade ago that isn't the latest electronics on this put it into the performance mode and then you can, I, I run this all the time with wheelie control off but traction on and you've even got little buttons here to take the traction up and down copied from the Tuono that has the same system and it's really really good on this these also double up as your plus and minus for your cruise control though which is really handy so plus and minus speed for your cruise control something they're not done on the Tuono missed a trick there so this bike is incredibly practical the latest electronics which work fantastically well a brilliant engine response just a very very nice easy to ride motor you know you don't need to do anything to this bike. Now, I said this last year. You don't think, well, I've got it remapped and it'll improve the throttle response. It's absolutely perfect. It's not snatchy. It's very, very instant. I mean, instant. The throttle feels instant on this. There's no ride-by-wire lag on this bike. It feels like a one-to-one -one throttle. So that's the only thing about it. You've got to be very gentle with your throttle inputs. You know, it's not, it's not, even the, even the dragster was a little bit snatchy. It was very aggressive on the throttle. This isn't, you can just poodle this. You no need to change any of the modes. I just leave it in sport the whole time. There's no need to adjust the throttle maps. This is, this is when you know a bike is perfect. When you don't have to then go in and swap between sport, road. You don't want to keep doing that. What's the fun in that? You just want it set up perfectly from the factory. And that is what this bike is. But. It's a lively throttle. You've got to be. You, you can almost whiskey throttle this bike if you're not if you're a bit if you're not very precise with it. So that is probably my only criticism with this bike, and it's not really a criticism, but just watch the throttle, and you have to be precise with it. If you if you're a bit forgetful or you're tired, then that could be a reason to change out the sport mode and go for a softer throttle, because you, especially if you're running the wheelie control off everywhere. You could actually whiskey throttle this bike and, and flip it if you were just a little bit tired and you gave a bit of an incorrect throttle response. 
That's how much grunt it got, it's got. When you go on the power, the power feels like 60% of the power is there instantly. As soon as you turn the throttle, you've got 60% of the available torque instantly. That's what it feels like. It's just so much grunt. It's a wall of grunt. It's way gruntier than any of the other Super Nakeds. Way gruntier. The Tuono in the mid-range then becomes stronger than this. So that you get 60% you get of your grunt instantly and then that fades down from that, from that point on. Whereas the Tuono will give you 30% of your, your torque instantly and then when you get in the mid-range you'll get 80% of your torque. So the Tuono wakes up more in the mid-range than this does. But this just has power instantly. And that is a brilliant characteristic of this engine. There's no need to go up and down, bang it down, overtake. It's just any gear. Instant power! But with great power becomes great responsibility. As Spider-Man once said. <laughs> this thing is a wheelie monster. And what is great about it, and this is something the Speed RS was good as well. Oh, on out of the road, you lot. Come on, out the road. Bloody hell. The Speed RS was the same, you know, with the electronics on, it does still let you have a bit of fun getting the wheel up. And that's the whole fun, that's the whole point of a Super Naked, isn't it? It's about fun. And the Speed RS also let you wheelie with electronics on, so that was good. The Street Fighter, the Tuono, they don't let you wheelie very much with electronics on, so that's a bit of a criticism of those bikes. You can turn the wheelie control off, and then you can wheelie them, but just bear that in mind, if you're not, you know, if you're not skilled enough to, or, or feel comfortable enough to turn the electronics off, but still want the wheel coming up and have a bit of fun, then the Super Duke, the Speed RS, are the ones for you. If you want to sample a bit of wheelie action without the risk of getting thrown off the back, <laughs> those are the bikes. We're off! Sounds great too. I love that V-twin growl. It's a real growl on this bike. A snarl. It's a snarl, not a growl, a snarl. Quick shifter and blipper is also one of the best. Very, very good. Even at low speed, high speed, it's an incredibly good quick shifter blipper system on this. Front brakes, Dilemas are fantastic, much better than the, the Gen 2 braking setup. Not quite as sharp as the Speed RS, but still very, very good. And lots of feel from the brakes as well. Lovely brake setup. Doesn't unbalance the bike as you go on and off the, the brakes, you know. You can ride this like a sports bike, whereby you're using the front brake do most of your braking with without transitioning too much weight around. <laughs> it's a weapon this, you know. Absolute weapon. So there she is, the Super Duke 3 in all her glory and in my favourite colour. I do love these Red Bull inspired colours with the orange and the blue, the matte blue. I'm not so sure I'd like the matte because this morning when I filled it out with petrol, I spilled a little bit of petrol on the tank and uh, mm, I have to find clean that off somehow. <laughs> but matte paint, not a massive fan, but I do love the orange and the Red Bull. Blue is very nice. The new frame, three times more rigid than the old frame. You know, that frame rigidity has made a massive difference to how the bike handles now. One thing I really like with the KTMs is all the engines uh, are painted. So I don't know if it's a powder coat finish or whatever it is, but the whole engine is painted. There's no bare aluminium anywhere to, you know, to corrode. And the actual quality and finish of the engine paint is really good. I've never seen a, a KTM with a, with a dodgy looking engine. They always look brand new. This, this paint finish is really nice. I like the way, I wish all manufacturers would paint the entire engines. I think it just makes them last so much better without, you know, if you've got bare aluminium, it tends to corrode a little bit. New, 
for 2021. This is, I think, the only update on the bike is this orange sticker on the wheel. I know it's a huge, huge update for 2021, but there is now an orange sticker on the back wheel. Woohoo! Another little nice touch is the seat finish. It's not just like a plastic seat. I think it is a plastic seat, but it looks it's got a bit of contrast to it, and it's got like a Alcaterra seat. Is it Alcaterra? Is that right? There's also a little bit of stitching. Oh, you know, so the seat. The seats are nice, so this is just a standard seat. There is also a heated option as well, and a comfort option on the seat. Another thing with the Super Duke, you've got your toolkit under the seat, but it's actually pretty practical under the seat on these. There's a fair bit of room in here. You know, you definitely get a Happy Meal in there without any problem at all. I think maybe, oh, what's that do? Oh, there's a little pull thing here. Does that release the front seat? Should we have a look? Pull the little tab. Yeah, and then that's your front seat off. So there's not even a bolt hole, so you can get it with the key. You can get both the front and back seat off. There's the ECU. Anything else interesting under here? Fuse box. What well, is rather nice, and all KTMs have this, under the seat, it tells you how to set your suspension for sport, comfort, you know, max, and how, to, how many clicks to do on the rebound and everything. It's quite a nice little touch, that. How to set your suspension, because everyone, no one knows how to play with their twiddlies, most people. It's a bit of a black art, isn't it? But you can follow KTM's instructions, and that actually works pretty well. But there we go, a little quick walk around of the Super Duke. Won't spend too much time on it, because, of course, you would have seen it in my last year's video, haven't you? Of course you have. Right, let's put it up the hill climb road. Everyone's favourite. It's a very nice riding position. You can hang out of the seat on this. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it would make, it'll be great on track. It would be really good on track. The bars are wide, you can give it leverage. I think it would be as nice on track as the Speed RS was. A little bit softer, the suspension. But I think in a good way, for a road bike in a good way. It still delivers everything you need around the twisties, but it's just a little bit more compliant. Yeah, that's good, that is, that is really good. Really good. When you hang off of it, it's got a really nice feel to it. The tank's nice and sculpted, you can, you can hang on to it with your knees. Yeah, that feels really nice to hang out of actually. I'd like to get this on track. KTM, can I do a track day on it? So this is a monstrous great 1301cc V-twin. I think it's a 72 degree V-twin. You'd expect it to be a little bit vibey. And it's got a tiny amount of vibes. I'd say similar vibrations to what the Street Fighter has actually. The Tuono's got less vibes than this. This is similar to the Street Fighter vibrations. It's fine, it's probably similar well, the speed triples a bit more of a buzzy vibration, a bit higher frequency, but still fine. You know, none of these new bikes really suffer badly from vibration. The original Super Duke was a bit vibey and it would make your hands tingle after a while. This is so nice now. I mean, even below 3,000 revs, this is where this, these used to be really bad. Below 3,000 revs, it was unusable. So your usable power range was sort of between 3,000 and 9,000. That was your usable power because below 3,000, it was, you know, you'd be like riding a jackhammer. So from now, if we go down to 2,200-ish revs in third gear at 20, let's go 25 miles an hour, let's really push it, 25 miles an hour. There's a few more vibrations right down there, but it is still usable. That would have been blah, 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 blah on the old bike. This engine is so refined now. I mean. KTM have been making this 1290 motor. When did that first come out? Uh, 2000 and, oh, 2013, something like that, 2014. It's been around for a long time. Well, it was in the RC8 originally, wasn't it? And when was the RC8? That was out sort of 2009, the RC8. So this engine is over 10 years old. 10 years of development, of revisions, has ended up with a power plant, which is incredible. It's not even particularly thirsty, this bike, 
This is why KTM have dropped the fuel capacity. Well, I think it used to be 17 and a half litres this. They've dropped it down to 16 litres because they've improved the fuel efficiency again. And I'm getting around about 130 miles to a tank on this. So even from a practical perspective and fuel consumption perspective, it's knocking it out of the park. Oh, dead dear. Bambi, dead. The riding position on the Super Duke is very, very comfortable. It's a bit more forward than the old bike, but I, I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. It's The seat is very wide, very comfortable seat. The leg position is pretty relaxed. You know, your feet are a little bit behind your hips or maybe, yeah, a little bit behind your hips compared to some of the others, but it's a sporty position. A bit, it's a little bit like the Speed RS, apart from you've got a little bit more forward, I'd say, your upper body, but it's still pretty comfortable. But because the seat is so wide and nicely padded and also available as a heated, it's, uh, it's a really comfortable bike. I think it is way more comfortable than the Street Fighter, which I found a bit uncomfortable after a while. It's more comfortable than the Speed RS because the seat is a little bit thin at the front of the Speed. It's more comfortable than that. It's probably slightly more comfortable than the Tuono. The Tuono is also very comfortable. It's got a really wide, comfortable seat. But your leg, your feet are a little bit higher up on the Tuono because of its sports bike origin. So it's a little tiny bit more comfortable than the Tuono, but there's not much in it. How's she in the bigger twisties? Yeah, nice. Very nice. Very stable. I mean, it is a little bit heavier, this bike, than some of the other Super Nakeds. This is about 190 kilos dry, so I think it's about 210 wet, so it's probably an equivalent weight to the uh, Tuono, actually, but it's not as light as the Speed RS, it's not as light as the Street Fighter. To ride, can you really tell? Perhaps it feels a tiny little bit heavier than those, those two, but it's a physically bigger bike than the, the Speed. I love the Speed, I love the Speed, but it's a little bit small. I don't think it's any bigger than the street triple. And for me, being a big 18 and a half, 19 stone now, fatty, I think the speed is just a little bit small, perhaps. It feels comfortable enough to ride, but I, you just look a bit big on it. This has got a bit more to it. There's a bit more motorcycle here. So yeah, I can forgive it a few extra kilos for a bit more physical presence. So yes, you get my point. I'm uh, I'm loving the Super Duke. Standout features for me with this bike is how easy it is to ride, and you don't feel like you can, it's got one speed. It's perfectly happy in town. The throttle response and fueling is superb. The suspension's a really good blend of sports and comfort. So the suspension is very, very nice. The fuel economy is good. It's got all of the road toys. You know, it's got heated grips are an option, not standard, an option. It's got the cruise control works very, very well on this. So it's got all of the practical toys. You can even have the tire pressure monitors. It even tells you it's got a fuel gauge, which the Street Fighter doesn't have. Throno does now but it even tells you oil pressure. It's got everything. You do need the tech pack. The only bugbear with this bike is it's 15 grand plus another 800 quid for the tech pack. But I've seen dealers are now chucking that in with the cost of the bike. So for 15 and a half, you can get one of these with the tech pack, with all the toys, quick shift to blipper. The only thing you've got to add is heated grips if you want it. So it's a very practical machine. Like I say, it's got the fuel range. There's very few negatives with this bike. Very few negatives. So the question is, is it still the number one naked? Ah, oh, it's tricky. It's very, very close between this and the Tuono. I, I don't think you can choose between this and the 2021 Tuono. Aprilia have done a great job updating that bike. It's a much easier bike to live with and it's really close between those two, so just take your preference, really. The Tuono is more thirsty. The Tuono doesn't have quite the same range as this. You know, you'll use more fuel on the Tuono. Also, the servicing on the Aprilia, when you've got to do the valve checks, can be expensive. It's expensive to do the valve checks, which is every 12,000 miles. I think it's 18,000 miles on this for the valve check. 
and it'll be cheaper you know because of the KTM sort of dirt bike origins they come, come apart really easily it's almost like a big dirt bike so servicing costs shouldn't be as high because of how easy they are to come apart I mean it's a proper naked isn't it the labour's not going to be as intensive stripping it down and you've only got two two cylinders you need to work on not four cylinders so it will be cheaper maintenance wise than the Tuono Super Duke Tuono very very close at the top for me in third position it's a bit of a wild card it's probably either the Speed RS if it wasn't for the electronics of the Speed RS it could be fine for that top spot but I don't think it can with, with the limited electronics it's between the Speed RS and actually the uh, the Dragster for me the MV Dragster I absolutely love that bike that bike is the winner if it's just intoxicating engagement you want if it's just about rider engagement the Dragster is at the top of the list the Street Fighter probably comes in fourth place it's expensive, the quality of the Street Fighter is head and shoulders above any of the other nakeds. It is incredible quality and I love the look of it as well. But I just found it hard work to ride, a bit overly stable. You know, the rider engagement was quite low on that bike. But yeah, it is a beautiful thing, but that's probably fourth place. The new ZH2 I'm borrowing next week, so I'll let you know how the ZH2 fits slots in there. <laughs> but, uh, well, it should be a lot better, actually, because my big criticism with the ZH2 was the suspension and brakes weren't great, and on the SE version, that's been addressed. So, uh, yeah, quite looking forward to the uh, ZH2 to see what Kawasaki have done with that for 2021. But there we are, yeah, so the Super Duke and the Tuono are the daddies. For me, out of the two, I'd probably take this because it's a tiny little wee bit more practical. But they're very, very close. You can buy either of those bikes and be incredibly happy. You can buy any of those bikes and be incredibly happy. They're all fantastic machines. And that's the thing these days. All these bikes are incredible. They're all incredible. And it really is nitpicking between them. And uh, I'm very fortunate I've got to ride all these so much and spent so much time with them. But even that, it doesn't make it any easier. It's still very, very difficult to try and pick uh, a winner out of that lot. They're all amazing. Well, there we go, guys. Thanks for watching, as always. If you're not already subscribed, please consider clicking the subscribe button. Keep the YouTube gods happy. And I'll see you on the next video, guys. Cheers. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, oh.